Some more chips. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, nice 15 million. That's okay. We chop it. <laughs> We didn't really chop it. So yeah, it but went uh, oh like, no! Back here, here, here Scott Once raising up nine hundred. Ludo just flattened the jacks. The hooks are doing another lap around the table, and they've landed on Ludo, who does just peel. Just got some information, Dempsey. Oh dear! It's a big, big disappointment for old Tom Hall. They've postponed the tournament till next weekend. <laughs> the tournament that you deliberately booked your flight so you can get home to. Yeah. The, the tournament I specifically booked to leave early to go home to. They kind of realized perhaps putting back. Oh my not god. Not having it this weekend was probably a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> no justice, oh. Tom. No justice for the pre planning. Oh, I was about to make so much money. <laughs> Scott checks top pair, Ludo. Oh, and I've just missed the 10k here as well. Oh Whoa. my god, Ludo. Whoa. Holy moly. Back to the action. <laughs> and there's a lot of it here. Jesus, what, is, what is this world I live in? Well, <laughs> someone has only 2.8 million chips in the spot. Ludo flat pre. Scott checked the flop. Could Scott check raise this? You block everything. Put 2 million. Can Ludo raise this? Interesting hand. Oh, God, Dempsey. What kind of life do I live? This is so annoying. <laughs> I'm glad I got messaged. I mean, at least I get to steam for 11 hours on the flight. Oh, yeah, that'd be a nice flight home. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it now. Busting your gut to get home for a tournament that's not oh, there. And here God. we go. Ludo pulling out the raise. It looks like... I mean, this, this is just... The Ludo hour. 6.8 million. How could Scott get away for any amount here? Right, I mean, Scott's just... Whatever, mate. Call Scott this one. Scott calls and then calls River every time, you know. Yeah, shout out to you, uh, Chris McGuire. Thanks for the message. I mean, I, mean I, I do appreciate it. It does. It, that does actually help me. I mean, stops me going to the actual venue tomorrow. Luke. It means I can probably drive home tomorrow instead. But still, I mean, what a nightmare. Yeah, Scott, of course, calls here. And what? I mean, what hand does he put Ludo on that's that's better than his? Five, seven, slow play. Right, but that's it. But it's mostly, mostly like you just give him king ten of hearts, king king nine of hearts, ten nine of spade, all sorts yeah. of draws. Like. Eight nine. That's a. I mean, eight nine would surely bet the flop versus a check. You would think. This is incredibly unlucky for Scott. Not just because it's a one outer to a hand where he makes a better hand and Ludo makes a huge hand. Because he's against Ludovic Gylik. I think probably a big reason that Scott checks the flop, which we don't love, is that it's Ludovic freaking Gylik, and he's going to take shots all the time. Scott's in a spot where he can never fold against this guy. He's going to lose a lot of chips. Ludo is the craziest Welsh guy since the dude who he's made Scottish. the great juice. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. Sorry. Sorry, Welsh and Scot Scottish people. I got that wrong. Right. Scottish, so, though? Yes, he's huh. Scottish. How about that? <laughs> how about that? And how about Scott checking this flop when he flops top pair on a pretty dry board that does have two clubs on it? This must yeah. be a player-dependent thing, right? I mean, it seems like he's he's got a very clear image of what Ludo is, which he is, which is, I'm going to take shots at everything. And, and he's like, I've got a pretty good hand that's going to pot control well when we're this deep. I'm not afraid of too many things. The board could run out pretty hinky based on... The flush draw could come in. There's overcards. But I think against Ludo, the idea is you mostly just call down and don't worry about it. And, uh, you know, unless the board gets super crazy, you just don't worry about and it. And I think that's the plan. I think it continues to be the plan on the turn where he bets. And he's like, well, if Ludo raises, got to keep calling. That's just life, man. You know, well, it's yeah. Ludo. I mean, and I have with this hand. And I have top two, which is yeah. great. Of course, Ludo, his value mostly beats top two. It's hard to imagine a two pair that Ludo could have. But it's also hard to imagine Ludo having a set and checking it on the flop. So he has that that one combo of hand that really makes sense to play this way so far for Ludo. I mean, not entirely, though. You think he might three bet pre. You think he might bet on the flop. True, true. I mean, So it's really hard to put him on any hand that you're losing to except like a set that checked back the flop like sevens or fives. Right. So it's really easy to put him on something like a heart draw or a combo draw with hearts especially. Yeah. And, of course, there's no folding queen jack here. It's just a real poopy spot. Now, the question is, 
Should Scott ever three bet with top two? I also don't think it's I think it's only a poopy spot because we can see Ludo's hand. I mean, it's a great spot. You're up against the crazy guy who just decided to raise on a super wet board. Yes, that's the top two. We're thrilled that this is happening. It's a poopy reality. Yes, that's that's better. I mean, Ludo is the craziest Scott since the guy who made the paper towels and toilet paper. There we go. Yeah, you nailed Uh, it. I had to get there eventually. So, um, so yeah, so I think this is a really easy call and not three bet, specifically because even though there's some action killing cards on the river and some scary cards cards on the river, Ludo's the guy who's going to represent all of them, right? And the draws make the most sense, right? Yes. Hearts didn't come in until the turn. Ludo's the guy who's apt to raise with a draw. Let's let him keep doing that. We don't want to blow him off of a bunch of complete random equity hands that have nothing, which Ludo is capable of having. So I feel like the plan has to be call and then call whatever happens on the river pretty much. I would even be worried about, you know, getting action from a worst two pair if we were a three bet. I mean, we might get it because it's a wet board, but it's not a guarantee. Right. So it just feels like a perfect setup to call. I'd be really thrilled to call. I'd be glad he raised and thrilled to call. Before we get to this very exciting river, we've got to pay the bills by talking about Nitrogen Sports, which is, you know, a worthwhile sponsor. Indeed it is. They have our monthly tournament where they guarantee a thousand buy-ins. We never get more than like a hundred and some odd players. So there's a massive overlay. Of course, there's sports betting as well. Other things. Indeed, it's a great place to go. You get money, your money out in 90 minutes. Right. It's a Bitcoin only site. It's industry leading in that it gives you your money in 90 minutes. Other sites that use Bitcoin don't do that. Don't fall for that crap. Get on Nitrogen. Get you some poker. Yeah. What do I think? <laughs> wow. Brick River. Yeah. And Ludo could could really bet really big here as well because you're extremely polarized and there's very few value hands. Scott doesn't necessarily have like a, a super strong hand here very often, but it doesn't really matter when they're polarized this hard because all all one pair hands are pretty similar. Right. Here it's we go. Going big. Yeah. Nice. Not taking a little bit off. This no, you, just, you just cost yourself two million there, Ludo. Eighteen point five. One point five. Scott, I mean, Scott, Scott are just getting savaged in this pot. <sighs> yeah, word. I'm, I feel you, buddy. I feel your pain right this second. Yeah, this is brutal. Okay. Oh, God, Can Scott it. fold? He's made so many amazing no, uh, no, plays. No, definitely not. This would just be a, a bad fold. We had some history last but night. But then, you know, if if uh, if if he does fold, then Ludo will have 63 million, which makes sense. Oh yeah. <laughs> Got a very good hand. Ludo may have texted that football in there by now. I'm not even sure when he texted me. I mean, I would have just snapped this off. You can't fold because it's like saying, oh, Ludo isn't going to have... He's not going to go for the river bluff here, which we know is not true. It's Ludo. Ludo doesn't really give up very often, does he? It's all been plain sailing for Scott, and now he's facing a bet for half his stack. But really, he's hoping for a big bluff. And like you see, what bluffs are there? If we expect, you know, 8-9... Bet the flop. Is it kind of like King Ten of Hearts? Does he check the set of seven oh set of fives on the flop? I'm oh, gonna start looking at flights. That's what more impresses me here. Well, the fact he's thinking. Oh my God, he's the sickest if he fought. Wow! wow. Holy oh, Christ! So what the hell? I don't even know anymore. I'm, I, you know what I'm doing? I'm out of here. I'm, I'm getting out of here. I'm done. I don't understand. Jonathan, don't leave. I'm out. I'm out. I'm, actually, I'm still here. So what, the, what the what is what I, my question to you, Grant? What just happened? How did Scott find a fault with top two? And is it good? No. no. I mean, it's just not good, right? I don't like, think so. As we can see, it was correct. Ludovic Gilek had him beat. 
So yes. in this hand, it was practically correct. It was, yes. If we, With perfect information as we have, it's a fantastic but fold. But is it technically correct? It cannot be. It cannot be. I don't imagine. Remember what we were talking about on the turn about how Ludo's the guy that you always want to let blast off when you have a big hand? Mm-hmm. Guess what? This is a bricky, bricky card. We don't expect Ludo to show up with four, six too often. No. Or pocket threes. It's a super bricky card. I know he's betting big, but it's Ludovic freaking guy. Like, we have a ton of data on this guy. It's all over the internet. We know who this guy is and he's, how capable he is of bluffing. We have top two. He didn't bet the flop. How can we possibly fold this hand? You know, that reminds me of our book, How Can He Fold? Uh, here's what I'm going to say. There's only two reasons to fold here that I can get, right? One is great. One is you're, you Daniel or grinder the hell out of this situation. So you just, look a uh, super read. Yeah, you look at Ludo. You're like, oh... He moved his hand in this way. He only does strength. You get a tell, and you can fold, I guess. Uh, maybe. Um, the only other reason to fold is you fold too much in these spots. That's it. That's not a good reason. To no. Fold. Well, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the only other reason that makes any sense, though, is you just, you're making a mistake in folding too often. And it seems as though Scott is making a mistake by folding too much here, and he happened to be right this the time. The only way to justify this is with a physical tell. Because right. if we go to how we've represented our hand throughout the hand is Scott, we checked the flop. So we're automatically underrepresented. Right. That, that says call. Distribution clearly says call because this is one of the best hands we show up with here. Exactly. Like I, I would think ace-queen clearly says call from yep. a distribution perspective. We have far better than ace-queen. Distribution clearly says call. Everything about Ludovic Gailik clearly says call. Yeah. This feels like such a call. I don't understand how Scott fa- found a fold. It's very disappointing for Ludovic Gailik. I mean, I like Ludo's sizing, by the way, because I, I would think that Scott would have kind of a binary decision on the river, like, well, I'm either calling or I'm folding, and a lot of the time Scott has one of those draws on the turn himself that he's going to have to fold to any sizing, and if he has a showdownable hand, he's going to call Ludo a lot. If it wasn't Ludo and it was an amateur, I might think, like, I don't even think you get away from it against an amateur, but maybe you could talk yourself into it because the sizing is such, and you're like, they just are never bluffing with that sizing. And maybe Ludo never bluffs with over the pot, you know, more than the pot bet, but he's Ludo. He knows his sizes. All right, all right. So we we love a, a call here. Of from course Scott. we do. His steady folds. Let's see what the solver says. Okay. Well, the solver agrees completely with us. It wants him to call 98.5% of the time. And that might make you think it wants him to fold 1.5% of the time. No. But no, it wants him to raise <laughs> 1% of the time and call half a per, or no, fold, fold half a percent of the time. So, yeah, the Here, solver hates it. But no, the solver does not like it. But that said, the, a call is only worth two blinds more, 800,000 chips than a fold, which is surprising to me. I would have thought it'd be worth even more than that. Right, considering how many draws came in on the turn and then missed the river. Yeah. yeah. So, so, the, so it's like it's not as good a spot as maybe it feels like. But still, distribution says call. The opponent says call. The way we've repped our hand says call. The poker guys say call. The poker guys say call. So the poker guy said call on that river, even though Scott did not say call. And in fact, he threw his hand away. What do you guys think about this? Do you think it's possible that Scott has really got this whole thing figured out? And maybe even Ludo isn't going to bluff here as much as we're assuming he will? Because that's one of the things that makes sense. Maybe. Also, we'd love for you to weigh in on the flop play. Neither player decided to bet on the flop. Both of them very reasonably could have. The solver liked to bet for sure from both of them as well. Uh... We'd love to see what you have to say. Let us know in the comments what you think about these and any other strategic things that come up as you watch this hand. And if you like strategic things, you might as well check out our book, How Can He Fold? You can click the link down there in the description to thepokerguys.net. That's where you can get the ebook or go to Amazon for the paperback. It is 37 tournament hands that we have broken down in text conversations. It's the best analysis we've got to offer, along with some fun, witty banter. Learn, have fun can't go wrong. If you like these videos, you're going to love this book. Make sure you subscribe to these videos.